before it was forced to the bow. Nothing but the repeat with Wentz back on the throne. All we do is set trends, so you know what we on. Yep, I'm back with the remix. It's fourth and John. All birds, all Philly, midnight green. Things changing for the better since we got that ring. Put the league on notice. We're not done. 2019, we adding another one. Yeah, you heard me right on every Tuesday night. Eight to ten birds of a feather got that flight. Nothing but the hot takes. Back with the big facts for the fans by the fans. Exactly where we at. Pull up to the tailgate, stop by F1. Baptized by the Pope, been bass for everyone. Flying in from the West Coast, even overseas. Get blessed by Ginger Jesus. We disciples of the tree. E A G, wait, C H M P S. Don't stress, we on the same conquest. Dominate the division, destroy the NFC, conquer the AFC. Grab that Vince Lombardi, went to AJ, climb it up the gut. Be grand with the strip sack. This sound familiar, huh? Aguilar on the slot, Sproles with the return, Mills with the pig six. Okay, wait, it gets worse. J train on the run, J E hitting from 60. But you see in that D line, that's what you don't want to see. Herbs catching tubs, foes on another level. The Super Bowl ain't the only time you see that Philly special. We live from Broad Street, brotherly loves the heartbeat. Hungry dogs run faster and we don't eat cheap. No one likes us and we don't care. Cause we from Philly and we ain't never scared. Look up. But I just gotta know one thing. Are you ready? No, I said, are you ready? What's up, Philadelphia? We are live broadcasting from Wildfire Sports Studios for NB. C Sports Philadelphia, welcome to the 4th and John Show, episode 75, boys and girls, made it to the bye week. And so far in this 2018 season, we have seen the good, we've seen some of the bad, we've seen some of the downright ugly from our beloved Philadelphia Eagles. And they're 500 right now, waltzing in or limping into the bye, depending on who you ask, what week it is. What day it is. The Eagles have won as many games as they lost or lost as many games as they won, depending on who you ask, what week it is, and what day it is. The Eagles could easily be 6-2 and two if they had not given away games against the Tennessee Titans and given away games against the Carolina Panthers. They could just as easily be 2-6 and six if they didn't have those fourth quarter red zone stands against the Atlanta Falcons and the Indianapolis Colts. It once again depends on who you ask, what week it is, and what day it is. But from what I see right now going into the bye, I don't see an Eagles team that's 500. I don't see an Eagles team that's 4 and 4. Coming off of a difficult loss or difficult win against the Jacksonville Jaguars in London, a team that has history of winning in London, the Jaguars, and coming off of how we doing, how we things, bringing in Golden Tate, bringing him into the Novacare complex, now wearing Eagles green. I see an Eagles team that's zero and zero. Because what happened in the first half of the season don't make a damn bit of difference. It's been well documented on the show. We've said it over and over again. Five out of the last remaining eight games are against division opponents. Two remaining games are against NFC contenders, number one and number two. If you're going to make the stand, now is the time to do it. Mr. Gail Saunders, Eagle Sessions on Twitter. How are you coming off of this win against the Jags? I'm feeling great. I, I was still talking about it was a must win. Uh, I feel like the, the word that comes to my, my head is rededicated. I feel like this, this football team is uh, ready to move forward in the best possible way. I think you give them a, a player like Golden Tate. It's, it's, a, it's a great Howie move. I mean, it, it's things like this that propel football team to get more wins and, and give them more confidence. And this move tells me that they th- they're thinking the same exact way. Um, but obviously, it's time to right the ship. Like you said, we're, it's, we're, we're, we're into that, that part of the schedule where you said we go on that run. It's easy. Meaty. So it's you meaty. spoke that into existence. Mm-hmm. I am banking on us going on a couple uh, uh, wins down, this, down a couple weeks. But um, I'm happy, man. It's, it's time. 
it's it's time to get back to playing Eagles football. Now, offensively, we have some weapons, and uh, this is how we do it. It just feels good to come back into the studio after a win, man. Yeah. Just, it, just, just a win. A little steroids. For, uh, you know, you know what I mean. Lift, lifts up the entire spirit. But you know, here in studio, I always say I like to bring in the big guns. Well, I brought literally the biggest gun I could find. <laughs> I brought in a howitzer right now from the 97.5 Morning Show. You know him from protecting Donovan McNabb's blind side for 11 yeah, season there, Mr. Trey Thomas. How yeah. are you this evening, Man, sir? I'm fantastic, man. You know, life is good. Absolutely. Life. Now, what do, you, what do you think about that win? What kind of statement did the Eagles make? Beating a Jacksonville Jaguars team, that's that's difficult. They're struggling, but that defense is difficult. Carson Wentz went out there. He did his thing. The defense seemed to step up. What, what, what do you take away from that win? I mean, it was, um, it was a good mental toughness win. I mean, you know, to go in a situation where um, you're not used to the, the whole travel, the timing of it, uh, the different the, – the, the flying out there seven hours, uh, the energy that's going to be – you know, Jack, Jacksonville already has been out there three, four, five times, so they already kind of have the rhythm of it mm. and how it lays out. So, you know, that was an advantage to them, but – you know, um, I think that we handled the trip extremely well. Um, there are still some things that I see technically that's going to continue to have to uh, work itself out if we want to move forward. And okay. we, even though we have these weapons and, and Golden Tate, and I'm glad that we have a weapon like that, but we still have some protection things that continue to show themselves mm. that's going to need to be corrected so that we can get, get the ball to Tate. Nice. You know, and, and keep Carson clean. But I think having Tate in there is definitely going to be something where, you know, if he gets enough separation quickly, that it might be something where Carson can get rid of the ball a little quicker. Absolutely. And when we talk about the trade for Golden Tate, just to run down some numbers, because it was a third round pick, the news came out, everybody was excited. And then I decided to revisit the numbers on Golden Tate. Mm-hmm. Already has 517 yards, three touchdowns, two games over 100 yards, one of which being against the Cowboys, where he had 132 yards and two touchdowns. Currently has 900, or 292 yards after the catch. So of his 517 yards, over half of them, over half of them are yards after the catch. In 2017, last year, He was fourth in yards after the catch with 639. The three ahead of him were running backs, which was a which kind of surprised me, but it makes sense because the running back's going to catch a screen, Mm -hmm. take it for all those yards. Wide receivers usually catch the ball. How much wiggle room does he have unless it's a big chunk play? Mm -hmm. Golden Tate's going to be bringing those chunk plays. Also in 2016, he was ranked fourth in yards after the catch. In the previous four years with the Detroit Lions, he never had under 90 catches and the last philadelphia eagle to receive 90 catches anybody want to want to guess last eagles player to have 90 catches i have no idea 2007 brian westbrook believe it or not (laughs) and he was such a weapon and now it's great to get another weapon for carson wentz to use especially in those big chunk plays Mm -hmm. because you want when you have a guy that's able to catch the ball Make the moves that he's able to make. Screen game becomes more effective. The defense, like, think about Alshon Jeffrey, Golden Tate, Nelson Aguilar, Zach Ertz. I, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm naming an all-star yeah. cast right here. Yeah. But Trey, just to touch on what you started talking about, is my biggest concern is in the trenches. Because mm-hmm. right now we got Lane Johnson. Yeah. Who's missing some time, like like injury? All right, that that MCL. What was it? Grade two. Yeah, grade two strain. Which so, could have been, you know what? It, it, it's so frustrating. Speak on it, man. Because I mean, you know, it could have been something. I, I think every offensive lineman in the game, man, they should be wearing knee braces. Ninety uh, percent of our injuries come from guys falling on your knees. Protect just put on some knee braces. So why don't they? Because they want to look cool. They want to feel. I don't know. They say it feels restrictive. I I don't know. I don't need you to to be out there agile, acting like Barry Sanders. I need you to be a tank and be fortified and be able to block and make and create movement. And I need you to have everything braced up. Mm. If, as an offensive lineman, the two things, the three things you really need to protect your wrists, elbows, and you got to protect your knees. Everybody needs to have on Don Joy wrist braces, elbow sleeves, just because you punch all the time and you need 
need to have on some damn knee braces because, I mean, you got it's always guys falling into your knees. That's where all of your injuries are created. You know, that's where it happens. Now, I know Trey Thomas. Everybody knows him as, you know, the left tackle mm-hmm. for Andy Reid. Everybody knows him now as 97.5, the morning host, right? I know him as the guy that's always walking around with that notepad, yeah. taking notes constantly. It's in his blood, taking notes on the players, the techniques, uh, always jotting it down, always memorizing that kind of stuff. Now, something that we observed in Lane Johnson, even in the preseason, mm-hmm. was the fact that he was getting pushed back. And that's something that was very unlane like especially coming after the performance where he's spinning Von Miller like a top mm-hmm. last year. Yeah. What is what is changed? Was he injured going into the season? No. Was it, did his technique change? Yeah, his technique changed. Uh, what he started doing is started he started catching. He wasn't he got away from punching, you know, um and then also, I think a couple times he started oversetting his guy. You know, uh, if you have a defensive end out there with his inside foot back, as an offensive tackle, you should stop on your third kick. You should already know that if his inside foot is back, I'm stopping at three if I'm a vertical setter. Now, if you're sitting at 45, you don't want to take any more than two kicks at a 45. If you take three, then now you, if he gets edge, you're just going to turn. But mm. if you're a vertical setter, you understand that that guy has his inside foot back. You're stopping at three. Too many times Lane stops at four. You know what I'm saying? So he takes okay. that one extra kick, and then that get, that makes you even with the DN. And as a tackle, you never want to be even. You always want to be slightly inside out. And if he's taking that fourth kick when the guy is coming in on his third, then now he's even with you, which create. And if you don't punch, then now that's even worse because now he can just bull you in and then take you inside because you've already gave him the lane by overstepping it. You understand? Yeah, absolutely. Because, so, I mean, like you even go back and look at um, – you look at the sack that ended the game against uh, the uh, the last game. Um, I can't even think of it right now. But uh, where they had the two, fourth and two, where uh, Carolina, where, yeah, Carolina, mm-hmm. where that was a delayed te, right? Mm-hmm. So the defensive end has his inside foot back. You have a wide three technique, okay? Mm -hmm. So as a wide three technique with an offensive tackle, you should set vertically and drag because you have to expect that if it's a wide three technique that there might be a TE coming. Now, Lane looks out there, sees that the D-hand has his inside foot back. Now, you have a wide three technique. You should be dragging, taking three kicks, and kind of waiting because here comes the delayed TE. And you got a TE. They got beat with the same delay TE to play before. It was a third and two. Now, when you say TE, you mean tackle, tackle, tackle and, and end. Okay, right? so come. So you have okay. two types of stunts. You have an ET and then you have a TE. When it's an ET, the end is penetrating and the tackle is looping. Mm. If it's a TE, if the tackle is kind of going outside and then the end is taking a couple steps upfield and then he's looping. So okay. that's a TE. So. What happened was the guy gave him – Lane took four kicks instead of taking three, which put him too far back. So now the D tackle takes him inside. He can't transition over, and he created pressure just because he overset the D in. You know what I'm saying? You have to stop at three. This is stuff that keeps showing itself, and we keep getting beat with TEs and ETs. I mean, just left and right because they don't communicate and they don't take the right steps. I mean, you think about the guys that have been like get, getting pressure on them. Like, guys like Carl Nassib has – Pushed him back in the Bucks game. Stephen Weathersley from the Vikings, who, yeah. who no one really knows who. Then Harold, Harold Landry, a rookie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's it's it sucks to see a guy of his caliber losing in some of those situations. And it's just got you have to get back to getting to your technique. You know, um, you, you I can see sometimes that maybe you know you're not getting. And see, this is the thing too. If mm. you're not practicing like that. Then it's hard to go from where everybody kind of goes real cool on you to now nah, it's full to full tilt now. Nah. That's it's a whole DN. different animal. Oh yeah, the DN isn't stopping now. He not, he's not worried <laughs> about that red jersey behind you. You know, so you, technique is one of those things that you have to drill it, man. Wednesdays and Thursdays have to be your hardest practice. You have to work it because if not, you're going to get in that game situation and that guy, you know, he, he's not stopping. He's going to give you that pop 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 that 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 extra step where you stopped. In practice, he's going that extra step further, and then there you go. Do you think it's a matter of him, tr- like a lack of confidence or overcompensating for a weakness, or is no. it just as simple as, like, it's dude, you need, it's just technique. It's just you just technique. just need to drill just, it better. Yeah, it's just getting to the point and punching. Yeah, I, Lane would help himself so much better if he just got back to punching. 
Mm. You, you can't be a grabber at tackle. You have to shoot your hands because if you're a grabber, then that means that you're accepting everything. You know, you need to be able, if there's a game, you have to be able to shoot your hands and at least stun the guy. You know, if there's a if there's a switch or something, you want to shoot him, shoot your hands so that you can flatten him. You know, I can't have an end coming in and he's just barreling down on my guard. I need to be able to punch him and to kind of flatten him out to give my guard a chance to transition over, you know. But if you. you're catching, you know, you, you're going to have to give up ground. Now, now you were on uh, Chip Kelly's staff doing defensive line. Yeah, work. my first year was on offensive line. Um, so that was Lane's um, rookie year when we mm-hmm. brought him in. And then uh, my second year, I worked with the outside linebackers focusing on pass rush. Focusing on pass rush. So it's so it's such an advantageous thing to coach, knowing what you know as an offensive tackle and having the experiences and the coaching up from Juan Castillo, and mm-hmm. that, that was a great mentor to you as well, to be able to then – Kind of scout your defensive line on how to attack. So if you were doing that again for an opposing team and you saw this Philadelphia Eagles offensive line, you you sort of touched on it with the stunts and the ETs and the TEs, Mm -hmm. but how would you go ahead and attack this Eagles offensive line? Would it just be stunts, different sort of pressures? The same way everybody's been getting them already. You know, a lot of these delayed TEs, um, a lot of the delayed TEs have really been giving them problems. Uh, You know, even where the sack, where... um, where, which was the fumble where Lane got hurt. Got hurt. Mm. Um, so that was a, a, a ET where, uh, that was on, um, on JP's and Isaac's side. So the end came crashing down. JP took the end down. And then Isaac came over because the tackle went the loop. Isaac came over and got on the the, um, the end. Yeah. But the tackle came around looping. JP was late to get there. That was Darius. So, yeah. Marshall so Darius. now he's coming around free. And then now Carson's trying to get out of there, get rid of the ball. And, you know, he's on his ass now. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, the court, they, am I bad? You know? No, no, so, no. no. That's right, good. So, You're good. You're so, good. So the end is on you now. And then now Carson falls into Lane's knee, with, which should have been braced up. And now he's down. He's out. Fumble. Sack yeah. fumble. But you see the tackle, though. Carson made a. <laughs> but that was on the interception. Oh, that was, that was on the interception. And, and now, look at this now. Did you see JP on that play? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golly, man. No, dude. I was praying. He was going to kill somebody, man. <laughs> like to, to, to have someone that's been dealing with that type of the, the injuries that he had, to see the effort that JP gave on that play. The bodyguard, man. Man, dude, he was. I, if he would have hit the guy, man, I think he would have hurt him, man. Because, I mean, JP came in there full tilt, and that's when the play he ended up getting a concussion. It reminded me of the play when he stuck up for uh, Nick Foles. Yeah, and he got blasted. yeah. yeah. But he was coming in there him. to make the play. If, if, if Carson didn't make the best form tackle I've ever seen a quarterback make, right. you know, you know, but um, JP was going to be there to save the, save the touchdown. Yeah. It was like Carson Keekley out there, dude. He, he looked like a <laughs> yeah. linebacker. Yeah. Wrapped the legs up and everything. We talked a lot about Lane Johnson on the opposite side of the offensive line. Now, I'm not speaking on this from any experience or, or, or any know-how whatsoever. It seems to me like an offensive tackle can have a very long, a very lucrative, and mm-hmm. very successful career for a number of years. Yeah. But it seems to me from the outside looking in that when it is done, it is done. Yeah. Like, offensive tackles can play 14 years at an incredibly high level. You don't see a lot of wide receivers doing that. You barely see a lot of quarterbacks doing that, Mm -hmm. defensive end. But offensive tackles can do that. But it seems like when it's done, it's done. We'll take take, uh, John Runyon, your teammate, for for example. 13 Mm -hmm. seasons, one final season with uh, Mm -hmm. San Diego. Mm -hmm. It was over. Joe Thomas, 11 seasons. Joe Staley, 12 seasons. Orlando Pace, Hall of Famer, 12 seasons, one more with the Bears. Mm Mm-hmm. Jonathan Ogden, yeah. who, by the way, has the biggest bust in all the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Like, his mm-hmm. head yeah. is just gigantic. It, it outweighs the entire wall right there. But when you look at uh, Jason Peters, we're now talking 15 years mm-hmm. playing tackle as a converted tight end rookie free agent with the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. How much longer can we expect Jason Peters to hold up with the type of injuries that not only he's accruing now— but the type of injuries he's coming from getting off of. Hey, you know what, man? Jason Peters could probably play another three years at a high level if he really wanted to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he really wanted to, he's probably the, the most athletic offensive tackle I've ever seen with just the way he could anchor, the way he could transition, um, 
his athleticism, like his the speed, um, the way he can run block now, what he's dealing with right now coming off of the injury. His quad is, is messed up. Um, you start to see him get in. He's so athletic that he would put himself in bad situations and could get out of it. Mm. Where if you – with this quad injury, you know, he gets in those same situations and it's not – you can't transition as quick as you used to could, you mm-hmm. know, just because the quad isn't there. But when he's in balance and when he uses his hands and he's and he punches, man, he's still in the best in the game. You know, um, to when he came back after that concussion, I mean, he went out there and just shut cats down. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's um, he's definitely uh, he's an animal, man. You know, yeah. but, you know, with the with his uh, quad, I think that kind of limits the way he's practicing. Mm-hmm. You know, because, again, you're going to, in practice, what young cat is going to go out there and rush hard on JP? You know, like, really? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and, yeah. And you have Carson coming back off of a knee. All right, you get out there and rush and fall into Carson's knee, your ass out of here before you can even go get a sip of water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's it. You're done. You know, but, um, you know, so so I think that that kind of worked against him a little bit just because you're not getting challenged like that in practice and you get you find yourself in those situations that you haven't been put in in practice. Mm. So, you know, I think that's what kind of got him earlier in the game. But, you know, it seems like, you know, it's starting to settle down where he's getting his strength back a little bit better and it's, he's starting to stay in balance a lot better. I saw, yeah. I saw a play with him uh or one on one with Tavon, Taven Bryan, uh, the Jags mm. uh, rookie DT, and he he threw him out threw him out the way on that that run play with yeah. Josh Adams. I mean, he he still got that grown man strength. Oh it's yeah, great to see the uh, th- him throw people out like he's a bodyguard. Yeah, man, a great run blocker. You know, perfect height for to be able to run block and everything. Real long arms, man. You know, but um, yeah, man. You know, he, he it's still there. You know, it's just that you know he. At times, you just gonna some stuff. You're just gonna have to drill. You're gonna have to drill, and it doesn't matter how good you are. You know, if you don't drill it, if you don't put yourself in that situation and some type of practice or something like that, then you know. And drill it hard. Yeah, you got. You have to have. You have to get challenged, dude, in practice. Because if not, you don't want your first time going full tilt in the game. Yeah, that's, that's you not, know what I'm you're not setting you yourself know, up for no, success. No, 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 no you know, setting yourself up for failure. That's why I like a physical training camp. You know, that's why you know I, I feel like with, with training camp being so soft now, that's why you see all these injuries. The injuries, mm. you know, cats don't. You know, you don't. You haven't had a chance to harden your skin yet. And then, and there and there's something to that, right? Yeah. There's there's something to getting hit and getting used to that and seeing you know going getting full speed more than yeah. once or twice a week. You know. Speaking of setting uh, players up to succeed, uh, w- one of the fan favorites coming up, uh, and he made a roster spot after not playing a lick of football, uh, being an Australian rugby star, Jordan Milano. Now, I don't know what to make of this guy, uh, because I, I, in one sense, I'm like, how can you teach somebody an NFL pro-level skill set that quickly? And the other voice in my head is saying, Villanueva in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. had him at defensive end. Mm-hmm. The, the Steelers got him. Now he's been their left tackle and done a solid job of it. From the limited reps and the limited training camp and the limited kind of uh, preseason that he's had, the action that he's had, is this a guy who can develop into something yeah. that could be down the future? Yeah. 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 I, I think Jordan can be a dog on Pro Bowler, man. Really? Yeah. Like if he, if he really, if you got somebody to work with him and really teach him how to play this game, like he could be nasty, you know, just because, I mean, his size and, you know, his athleticism. It's just, you know, he just has – he got to just be a little bit damn tougher, man. You got to, you know – Put down the guitar? Yeah, you know, you got to put that damn guitar down, man. You know, he can and sing. If you, and he can sing. I, you ain't, yeah, sing. You ain't Bruno know. Mars. Yeah, he can you, sing. But if you're going to sing, I mean, sing, sing some damn um, – give me Johnny Cash or something, man. Woo! You know, you know, give me something okay. a little hard. Some, some country? You know? Huh? Some country? Yeah, but a hard country, though. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Not, not, you know – not a Tennessee whiskey. All right. Even so right, though it was beautifully no done. I mean, you know, I mean, if I could play the guitar, I'd pull a guitar out every time the chance I get. So you can you can can you sing? No, nah, I can't sing. Okay. No, no, so what maybe. what Jordan needs to do <laughs> no, is but, walk the line nice. and not play like a boy named Sue. <laughs> yeah. There we go. You see that title, little Jay? You didn't think you didn't think I knew. You didn't think I knew. But I know. But no, uh, he's good though, man. I, I I think he's extremely talented. I like that he's just showing everybody everything that he can do. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think that man, if you if he really puts in the work and he got somebody to really work with them, that he could be nasty, man. I, th- I think he definitely has all the tools. Do you to think, do it. I know. Do you li- think that Jason Peters is that mentor that he could use to to help teach him? Turn uh, into a Pro Bowl? Yeah, I, I, if JP wants to really, t- you know, do it, you know what I'm saying? Like I think so, you know. But um, it, when it comes to like teaching these cats and coaching them, man, you got to be, you know. Y- you can't let anything slide, you know, so it, it, it'll get to the point where you're almost on their nerves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't, it, when you, especially you need to call when them you, out on every time. you have to call them on everything. Like yeah. anytime they're in the huddle, if they're not in the huddle right, if they don't have their chin strap on, you know, you have to always, you know, and do you want to be on somebody like that? Because sometimes that, that, that kind of gets on their nerves, you know, because mm-hmm. I used to be on lane all the time, just, you know, hey, make sure your hands up, make sure you do it, you right. know, don't turn your foot, you know, and that's, that, sometimes that can be, yeah. you well, know. Well, offensive line, it seems like it's a very, there's very, very subtle things that you need to be on top of. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, and it, you're constantly on them, you know, and it's going in the back. All right, let's put the film work in, you know, let's look at, let's watch it, you know. So yeah, you, the, you'd have to really want to do it. In the beginning of the season, Lane Johnson said he wouldn't be surprised to see Milada get some time this season. Do you see that as an actual thing that could happen? I mean, the way tackles are going down right now, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you know, because I mean, who who you don't have anybody else. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have Lane that goes down. So if if you mess around and have Vitai, if Vitai goes down, then what you have Matt Pryor. Yeah, Matt Pryor. And then I mean, you are you only dressing seven for each game, so you only and you only have ten. So you know, Warmack can't play tackle. You know, so you had Isaac uh, is 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 a one of the tackles, but you know, you mess around and Vitai goes down. I mean, what are you what are you gonna do? If Vitai and uh, Kelsey go down, you're done. Yeah. Like, that so. means that Jordan is coming in the game, and then uh, whoever else that we can put out there. Wait, be the was Australian Michael type. Kendrick's assessment on Hard Knock? I don't know. I'm sure you heard the audio going through, and 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 you heard what he had to say about Vitae and kind of his scouting report as he was giving it to the Browns. Do you think that was an accurate? Scouting report, i.e., he stands up a little bit too straight. He he uses his size to compensate for technique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, sometimes they, you know, he once he stopped trying to set like JP, I think Jordan, I mean, I mean Vitae got a lot better. Uh, he needs to still work on punching. You know, uh, he he sets out and he has his hands down to his waist and he's trying to come up at the last minute. And, you know, like I always say, you got to be able to shoot your hands. Mm. And it's just a matter of he has to get used to the timing, you know. Um, And then it's hard, man, when you're going from left to right. You know, a lot of people think that that's easy, man. That's not, you know, that's not as easy as you think. You know, I played left tackle for 11 years. There's no way you could put me down in the right side, you know, to to have me go right tackle that, you know, because now everything is backwards. You know, I'm always like riding a bike backwards yeah i've always been taught to always shoot inside hand first inside hand first then finish with the outside hand now if i go over the right tackle and just out of habit throw my right hand first psh, man any tackle that throws his outside hand first should be sitting on the side making sure that he fill up the gatorade cups out because he's gonna get his ass kicked all night now, now something that the eagles did against the jaguars and it's something that the fan you know you know it's a, it's a funny thing like, Eagles fans were, were a little bit obnoxious, were a little bit rowdy at times, but they're not dumb, yeah, right? Nah. No, they're not dumb at all. So it's so funny to see sometimes when the fans start screaming this or that, this or that, and to kind of see it come to fruition in a game plan, and it works. Like the, like the Eagles against the, uh, against the Jaguars, especially when it came to rushing the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, the Eagles had 30 passing attempts, 28 rushing attempts. Man, that's about mm-hmm. as balanced as you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the corner's got to play up a little bit more. You know what I mean? Stop giving them 10-yard cushions. We're screaming it week after week, and week after week, Jim Schwartz is doing it. Something that he did against the Jaguars that was a pleasant surprise to see, and it was welcome, was the blitzing. Yeah. Now, you had a defensive coordinator during those times with Andy Reid named Jim Johnson, mm-hmm. who was a a blitz master. Not only did he call it at the right time, mm-hmm. he did it at the right moment. He had the right players doing it. Do you feel that Jim Schwartz's Jim Schwartz's system, like the way you saw it being played against the Jaguars, like he should be incorporating that more, yeah. that much more? Because really, the front four, it's getting pressure, but it's not getting home. Yeah. Well, in order for the, I, I, I'm the, I, I think that when when it comes to the the the, the D line getting home. 
you for in order for a sack or for pressure to come, you're going to need to have secondary that can play tight. You know what I'm saying? Because when you have Eli getting rid of the ball at 1.8 seconds, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mm. mean, if you give up a 10-yard cushion, I mean, that's a, you know. It's easy. That's a quick it's little catch. Se- uh, yeah, a quick little seven-yard catch, you know. So I, I think that for you to for, for to get for the front four to get there, you definitely need the secondary to play up a little bit more and be a little bit more physical, physical because you want to throw off the timing. I need that quarterback to hold the ball to at least 2.4 seconds. If he can hold it to 2.4 seconds, our defensive lineman should be putting a helmet on him. Like I record every – when I watch a game, I record every throw, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. just so I can kind of see, you know what, if they're getting rid of the ball at that one nine one eight two zero, then that means that we're playing too far back. We need to be playing up a little bit more. Now, now, if the, if he's getting rid of the ball at that two three two four, then if he's holding the ball and he's getting rid of the ball at two eight, well then the secondary was there. Now that's the D line fault there. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. the average seven step drop takes two point five seconds. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, if he going over two point five seconds, then I mean that means that the rush didn't get there. The secondary did their thing. Excellent, excellent. In the beginning of the show, I got kind of the opening monologue. I talked about you know it depends on who you ask. You know, the Eagles are won more games than they lost or lost more games. It, it depends on who you ask. And so far this season, it's been such an up-and-down thing, right? Mm-hmm. Beat the Atlanta Falcons, hey, they broke out the Philly special, dude. Repeat, we're doing it. Mm-hmm. And then a disappointing game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan base goes down. And then the fan base gets to pick me up against the Colts and then against the Tennessee Titans. And then against the Giants. And then, you know, it's, it's been sort of a roller coaster ride. The way I want to do it is just wipe the slate clean. It's an eight-game season moving forward. How do you see... The remainder of the season, knowing that there's five games in the NFC East coming up, you got one against the the Saints, one against the Rams. How do you see this shaping up for the Birds moving forward? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Tate um, comes into this, how he's mixed into the um, equation. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how how uh, the tackles are going to work. You know how how long Lane is going to be down. Mm. Um, I think that uh, this recipe for the defensive side of the ball is definitely something that Schwartz can look at going into the um, going through this bye week and see that okay, you know what? I trust our secondary enough to where I can go ahead and blitz and send somebody. Um, I think at times when you look at our linebackers or whatever, when they do come in blitz, they get to the stutter stepping when they take on the running backs. Instead of when you watch some of these other teams, sometimes they just go full tilt through it. Yeah. That running back might not be able to block you. So if you go to stutter stepping, then now you give the, the running back a chance to, to, to firm up on you. But if you just go ahead and just hit the gap, all I need is the quarterback to move, mm-hmm. you know, to create some pressure to throw him off his off his um, off his off his off his set. But um, I don't know, man. It's gonna be a, this this first coming out of this bye week is gonna be kind of that test when you're going up against Dallas. It's gonna be a big game, big home game, and um, and, and it's gonna be a good defensive front. You know, Dallas is going to be a good test. So it, see, see, show, seeing how these guys are. And now you add a, a running back to their their thing, too. Now, I mean, a quarterback, I mean, a receiver with uh, Cooper. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, this is going to be a good test. I think this will give us a good feel for what the rest of the season is going to look like. Gail. 